Wake up, babe. New upscaler just dropped, Lupa Video Upscaler to be precise, which is a brand new diffusion-based AI solution to your low-resolution woes. It's cloud-based, so you have to buy a subscription plan. But is it worth your money? Lupa was kind enough to hook me up with some credits so I could give it a full tire kicking. I tested its upscaling ability with AI video, animation, archival footage, and even some modern real-world recordings. Across all these tests, I compared Lupa to the industry standard. Topaz Astra. And along the way, I think I discovered a little secret Lupa might be hiding behind the curtain. So stay tuned for that. Let's jump right into the interface, as neither of these upscalers has a very complicated user experience. There's an icon to the left where you can click and upload a video, up to 25 seconds long, as long as it's under 50 megabytes. Below that are two toggles, one to adjust the frame rate via interpolation, and another that claims to remove Sora 2 watermarks. We'll take a look at that in just a little bit. Outside of that, there's an upscale button to send the generation off along its way, and a toggle to compare the inputs and outputs of the shots once complete, which we are looking at right here. So let's jump right into comparing. First thing I notice in this shot is that it definitely looks like some kind of diffusion upscaling is taking place. Textures in the wallpaper, seat fabric, and the woman's clothing clearly have added detail, which is a defining characteristic of most diffusion upscalers. Even objects that are slightly out of focus, like all of the pizza on the table, pick up some of the additional depth and detail. Nice. Lupa looks to be a diffusion upscaler, as advertised. I did, however, find the size of that upscaling to be a bit puzzling. It wasn't 4K or 1440 or NBA 2K, none of those recognizable sizes. Every output came in around 50% larger than the original. So for 1080, the outputs were just a hair over 1600. That's not an aspect ratio I'm familiar with many people using, and definitely well below the 4K all of the outputs Astro was generating without issue. I started to wonder if this could be a clue as to what might really be going on behind the scenes with Lupa Video Upscaler. This is called foreshadowing. As I continued testing, I also started to notice a lot of noise in the generation Lupa was producing, especially for any surface that had a good bit of fine texture to it. Many sections of the Pizza Shark skin seemed to develop a shimmering grain in the upscaling process. This continued through my testing of animated shots. Some of these examples started in Midjourney, which by default produces very small images that can prove challenging for upscalers, and Lupa certainly did find them challenging. The 3D animation shots seemed to go well enough, but this skeletal warrior is buzzing all over the place, particularly anywhere with movement like in the eye sockets. Topaz Astra, on the other hand, had no such difficulty. Even with the low-quality videos Midjourney spits out, these 4K animations look pristine, with Topaz seemingly not even phased by high levels of motion blur and potentially noisy textures like this skeleton's porous bones. I think the obvious next question is, what if I need to add frame interpolation to a cupcake that's bleeding to death? Well, Lupa can certainly oblige a higher FPS but not in the way I was expecting. Topaz Astra, for example, offers frame interpolation at what I thought were fairly standard increments, like 30, 60, and 120 frames per second. Lupa, on the other hand, appears to only be capable of doubling and tripling the current frame rate. So for this 24 frame a second cupcake example, the options are 48 and 72 frames a second. Worth noting that you don't have an option to not upscale at the same time. Now, it definitely works, hard to show on YouTube, but the resulting generation clearly gives me a higher frames per second, just as long as I'm okay with a frame rate that I don't typically see people asking for. In a vacuum, I guess that's fine, but I still have a creeping suspicion that Lupa might be hiding something from me. Just like with frame interpolation, you're required to upscale if you want to utilize the Sora 2 watermark remover. But does that feature even work? To Lupa's credit, this does seem to do an admirable job of removing the watermarks in the examples I tried. Some of Lupa's own examples do seem to show some obvious signs of masking, but who among us could best the AI mastermind himself, Sam Altman, without ever failing? All in all, this feature seems to work work reasonably well. So it's there if you need it, and in this case, Astra does not have an alternative. Fun fact, AI videos are not the only things that get upscaled, so I've started including archival footage in my testing for this very reason. I've got some television footage from the late 1950s and some film shot at the 1939 World's Fair in New York. Let's start with the TV footage, as it often proves to be the hardest example for most upscalers to handle. Lupa does a pretty solid job here. Keep in mind that in addition to being tiny, this TV clip started as interlaced and and is full of grain and scratches. Not much can be done with footage this terrible outside of diffusion upscaling, and Lupa answers the call. Yes, there is some ghosting around the woman's edges, and a few sections are filled with a creeping field of noise, but I'm reasonably impressed. I 
do notice one problem though. The aspect ratio is inexplicably off by a good chunk. The resulting output is wider than the source footage by a noticeable amount. That seems strange. I wonder if the upskilled film footage will, okay, so this is not great. It looks like Lupa squished this footage along the x-axis instead of stretching it out like the TV example. And it happened for both of the film examples I tried. I was able to stretch the footage back out in Adobe Premiere, and it looks pretty good compared to the original source. I cannot emphasize strongly enough how impactful full diffusion upscaling is for archival footage like this. It really is a different world when compared to traditional GAN upscalers. That being said, this strange scaling issue popped up with all of the archival footage I tested on Lupa. Meanwhile, Topaz Astra is just hitting 4K home runs with all of these old clips. The texture and detail it's adding is just a level above what Lupa is capable of. The TV footage barely has ghosting or noise anywhere. This is 480 footage from 1959. Lupa's trying, but it just doesn't have the Topaz juice. I wanted to add some modern footage to my upscaling benchmark, so I took a little field trip to a very fancy local cemetery and shot a bunch of 1080 video of the local boneyard. To be honest, the results were more of the same. Lupa upscales were consistently noisy, with lots of texture buzzing, where the Topaz outputs were far more stable and sharp. Lupa upscales were only ever 50% larger than the original footage. Bigger than 1440, not quite 4K. Astra, nothing but 4K. Every shot, just better than the competition. The base footage was was all 29.97 FPS. So the Lupa interpolation options were a fraction zoo. Not so for Topaz. Don't get me wrong, the Lupa outputs are fine, but also representative of many of the problems and limitations I have outlined so far in this review. And I was starting to get suspicious. I felt like I had seen this confluence of limitations before. You might have heard of Comfy UI. I dabble in this arcane, node-based interface from time to time. One of the standard nodes in Comfy UI is for latent diffusion-based upscaling. It defaults to a modifier of 1.5. You know, a 50% size increase. Sound familiar? There's another common Comfy UI node for frame interpolation. You don't set the frame rate though. It works as a 2, 3, 4 times multiplier. That seems familiar too. There are many Comfy UI workflows for Sora 2 watermark removal. You can Google all of this, by the way. And a common video upscaling technique in Comfy UI involves a node called Animate Diff. It's a pretty old node, to be honest, and I only bring that up because every time I saved a file out of Lupa, it defaulted to the naming prefix Animate Diff. Seriously, all of my files were outputting as Animate Diff. Everything. Which makes me think maybe, just maybe, they were created with Animate Diff. A free Comfy UI node you can download and run locally on your NVIDIA GPU. This is my opinion, and you can draw your own conclusions. But I think all of my Lupa video upscales were just Comfy UI workflows being executed on a Spanish server. You know what isn't a Comfy UI workflow? Astra. This thing is the real deal. Much like the residents of this taxidermy wall, Astra is a beast. It is the only diffusion-based upscaler that I would currently recommend if you're willing to pay for it, and oh boy, it isn't cheap. For 40 bucks a month, you get 20 to 30 upscales of the kind you've seen today. For 100 bucks a month, you get over 90. You could drop 300 a month and get 3 to 400 upscales. Not much of a Goldilocks plan in there, to be honest. With Lupa, well, it is cheaper, but as I hope I have made clear, you get what you pay for. Most of my generations ran about 130 to 150 credits, so for 6,000 credits after doing conversions to euros, you're getting about 40 to 45 generations for like 60 bucks. And you could probably do all of it in a local comfy workflow. I'm not saying you shouldn't pay for Lupa. Not everyone wants to drop a bunch of cash on a fancy GPU, but I wouldn't pay for this. That is my review in a nutshell. Astra is still the only diffusion upscaling game in town. I didn't even touch on creative upscaling like with this 20-foot geode here. The standard upscale loses all of the glinting crystal bits, where the creative upscale manages to bring a little of that back, though this might just be too much tiny detail even for Astra. Lupa only hands me a noisy purple mess. All of that is to say that running upscale deep dives like this can be super time consuming, but it is absolutely crucial. Every AI as a service company would love to sell you an expensive monthly plan while 
promising you the world. Which is exactly why I do all of these tests for viewers like you. Case in point, if you need a dynamic dialogue and lip syncing model when you're doing image to video generations, it can be pretty confusing and expensive to figure out which model is best to use. That's why I did a full test of VO, Sora 2, Kling, and Wan 2.5 for everything from humanoid characters to talking sharks. So unless you have an allergy to internet cats, check that video out right now if you ever want your characters to actually open their mouths and communicate. That's gonna do it for me today. Click some of these buttons. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.